Hello and welcome to the Premier League Hall of Fame, where we recognise and celebrate the exceptional skill and talent of individuals who've graced the Premier League since its inception in 1992. The Hall of Fame is the highest individual honour awarded to players by the league. This is our chance to celebrate the legends of the game as they're inducted into the home of the greats. They'll be awarded with a prestigious Members Medal and forever be remembered as one of the best the Premier League has ever seen. Later on, we'll let you know how you can get involved in voting for your choice to enter the Class of 2021. But for now, let's introduce the first of our two inductees, the greatest Premier League goalscorer of them all. He was the number nine, he was the main man. He was a born goal scorer. It's a landmark for Shearer. Players like Alan are born. The contribution he made off the pitch as well as on it. Without Alan Shearer, there's no title for Blackburn in 94 95 season. His 260 Premier League goals is, you know, stands up there above all the top strikers ever played in the Premier League, and that speaks for itself. Shearer hits it all. Absolute thunderbolt. Week in, week out, day in, day out, you knew what he was going to get once he crossed that white line. It is, of course, Alan Shearer, and he's here now. Alan, look, for anyone else, they think Premier League's record goal scorer, of course, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame. But how does it feel to you? Oh, it's amazing um, when you look at how many players, how many great players, special players, players that have made such a difference to their football clubs and had outstanding careers, then to, to be amongst all of those is, um, is a very, very special feeling. But you started out as a, as a goal scorer. Obviously, that's what, what you wanted to do with mm. your career. But did you ever have any ambition to be as successful as, as you have been? Well, I got a, I got a taste of it at, uh, at Southampton when I first started out. And um, scoring goals is such a special feeling when you see that, hit, that, that ball hit the back of the net. It's just an amazing. Once I did it once in front of a crowd, I wanted to do it again and again and again. And, and I was so determined to, uh, to, to work at it, to get better at it. And I was fortunate enough that I've worked with um, some great people over the years that have, um, that have helped me a lot. So once you get that feeling of putting the ball on the back of your net, the net, you just want to do more and more. And then, of course, you, you drew the eye of, of Blackburn, who were chasing a, a Premier League title. What was, what was the attraction for you of the move there? The attraction was the dream that was sold to me by, um, by your dad, Kenny, by the owner, Jack Walker, um, the chairman, Robert Corr, and Ray Harford, bless him, who's no longer four years. And with Jack's finance, with Kenny's know-how and experience and ability, um, it was going to happen and they were determined to make it happen and team, great manager and a team and a system that worked perfect for, for a centre forward because we had, we had two wingers who were just getting balls into the box every single game and um, that was music to my ears. Yeah, it was 16 goals in the first season, 31 goals in the, in the second season. Did it... Did it or was it adapted to you? Do you think that system? Well, I think so. I was, as I said, I was lucky enough to work with um, to work with Kenny, who had an unbelievable career himself. So, if I was going to learn, then who better to learn off than him? What he had achieved in in his career, and um, I knew how determined he was. I knew that the system was going to be made up for us to to for, for me to go and score goals. That's what they said to us that they were going to play a, a certain way. And we, we might not have been the best team technically, but we were the best team in terms of attitude and hunger and desire to go out and achieve what they wanted to do. And, and that's why we got it in the end. You mentioned that, that Premier League title. And mm -hmm. just as a, a bit of background, you go into that, that final game of, of the season, having had quite a cushion at one stage, yep. but it was starting to get a little bit tougher. You're reliant on Manchester United playing West Ham at, at Upton Park. Yep. That game is a draw at the time that the, the final whistle mm. goes at Liverpool. But before then, there was a real scare at Anfield. Yeah, we were, um, we stumbled over the line or we fell over the line. We were so nervous. Um, we hadn't been there before uh, and we didn't really know what to expect. We, ju we were just desperate for the line to, to come to us. And um, we were thankful to West Ham for 
for doing a, 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 an almighty favour in, in their result against Manchester United and, and I promise you the relief when that final whistle went not from not only from from uh, from your dad and Ray and from our fans but all of our all of the players because Man United were coming for us and they were coming pretty quick and, and Sir Alex was using all his know-how to try and claw that back and it was it was getting to us so that final whistle was just a, a huge relief and um, we had a brilliant four or five days with uh, with partying as you can imagine because <laughs> As I said, for, for little old Blackburn to come in and take the big boys on, the might of Man United, the might of Liverpool and Arsenal and all these guys, and to, to, to beat them. I know Jack Walker was wealthy, um, but for what he did and what Kenny did in, in moulding that team together was, was just, it was an amazing time. And the man who captained that side, Tim Sherwood, joins us now. Uh, Tim, thanks so much for your, your time today. Um, in terms of getting that, that Premier League title, how important was it that you had a striker like Alan? Imperative. I mean, I, I would go as far as to say without Alan Shearer, we don't win the Premier League. Um, I remember when I first saw Alan, obviously at Southampton, he was scoring goals. And when we managed to bring him into to Blackburn, he, let me tell you, he is the worst preseason trainer you have ever seen. I mean, when I saw him running around the field, I was thinking, oh, my goodness, what have we got here? As soon as the balls come out, you could not stop him. If there's a ball and there's a goal, it doesn't matter how quick someone chasing him is, he's sticking his fingers in your eyes and ears. And uh, he was just, he had the eye of the tiger uh, in front of goal and, um, you're right to say we adapted the style, but why shouldn't we adapt the style? I remember Kenny talking to me, just saying, get the ball wide to the wide guys and they get it in the box. And I don't know if you've ever heard this, Kelly, but when Alan leaves the dressing room, the last thing he says is at the loudest point of his voice, and you know how loud he can be, is <laughs> get it in. But he uses a couple of expletives for everyone. And if you don't get it into the box... He used to say, don't even look, just whip it into the box, I'll go and find it. And that's what he did. But that's, that determination, that single-mindedness, presumably that's, that's necessary in a striker, Alan. I think so. I think it's really important that, um, that wingers get the ball in. And if they didn't, <laughs> the way I was brought up was tell them. And if they didn't listen to you first time, make sure they listen to you the second time. And I mean, that's the nicest thing I've ever heard Tim say anything about <laughs> about me. If it if it was if it wasn't for his leadership and some of his balls that he was putting through and the wingers' balls, and then, um, then he played a, a huge part as well. And as I said, we might not have been the most elegant of teams, but we had the best team spirit, and and Tim was uh, was captain of uh, of of that. Um, but yeah, that's the way I was brought up is to uh, is to tell people if they didn't get balls in get them in get them into the box and and it was my job to get on the end of it I just said to the wingers get it in it doesn't matter how it comes in get it in and if I'm not on the end of it then by all means you have a go at me and we've talked a bit about Alan Shearer the the player Tim we've seen a lot of his goals what do we know about Alan Shearer the the teammate the man in the in the dressing room you've given us a bit of an insight tell us more be nice Tim is that Willie? Yeah, he's a leader. I mean, I won't tell any lies. I'm not on here to come and tell you lies. If I thought that whatever I think he is, I'm going to tell you. He's a he's a good man, you know, and he's a leader and someone you look across to in a tunnel. When you know, when you really were looking across at the Cantonars, you know, and the, and the Keens and the big players, what our rivals Man United had. And then we look around our dressing room and we see players like Alan. You know you've got people on your side who can cope and more than cope and give it to them. And you know that all of a sudden, Man United is starting to look across at us, you know, and giving us a glance and taking notice of Blackburn because of players like Alan Shearer, leaders, driven. He never wasted one day. I told, I'll tell you how bad he was pre-season when the balls were not out. But when the balls were out pre-season, during the season, he never wasted a day on the training field. And it was because of his single-mindedness, his stubbornness in front of goal and his drive to get that delivery, to get that service into an area where he knew he could make a difference, not only for Alan Shearer, but he made the difference for the team, was second to none. And I use, I use it when I come through and my coaching career and developing players like Harry Kane. I used to tell him, and he used to ask me, what was he like? What was he like in training? Harry Kane's got a similar um, determination and drive as what Alan Shearer had. 
Tim, appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much for your time today. Pleasure. Thank you. Good luck. Well done, Al. Cheers. Alan, we, we've heard a lot from Tim there about that drive, about that single-mindedness and that determination. But there's also quite a romantic element to your story as well, which was the return to, to Newcastle. You go for a record £15 million. You'd already been a, been a record signing. Mm. But you know, I think the quote from you was a sheet metal worker, son from Newcastle. Yeah. You know what it means to the people of Newcastle to have a local boy as their number nine. Yeah, the number nine shirt in Newcastle is, is very important, very special. Um, I watched number nines when I was a youngster growing up um, in Newcastle, stood on the terraces at the, on the Gallagher end. So it was always my dream to play for Newcastle and have that shirt and, and, and wear that with, with pride and score goals at St James's Park. So I was aware of the interest um, and I was aware also of the interest of, of Manchester United and I spoke to to both managers at the time, uh, Alex Ferguson and, and Kevin Keegan. I was, I was very close going to, to Manchester United. In fact, I'd, I'd sort of chosen a house that I was gonna, uh, gonna, gonna buy. Um, and then I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna go back home. I left home in, at 19, in 1985, I think it was, to, to go to Southampton to start my career. And I'd been away 10 or 11 years. And I just thought, you know what, no. I'm going to go back home. It, it meant that took much to me and I wanted to have um, some great years at Newcastle whilst I could still play and not go back whilst I was in my, in my 30s and then for them not to, to see the best of me. And it was the best decision I ever made. I know I would have won more trophies at Manchester United, but the 10 years I had there was unbelievably special. It was everything I hoped and wanted and more. What was it like scoring a goal at St James's for mm. you? Well, the first time was incredible against, uh, against Wimbledon. We'd played Everton away in my first game and we were beaten. Um, so it was hugely important that we, uh, we go into that. Oh, I got the feeling again, I wanted more and more and more and, and thankfully I did. And we, we talked about your relationship with the club, the fact that you're a local boy, someone like Jackie Milburn, yeah. such a hero in, in Newcastle. What was it like to break his record? Well, it was, um, it was just an unbelievable feeling because it had taken the, the, the great Jackie Milburn's record. I mean, he was my dad's hero. So for me to go past him, and he's such an iconic name in, uh, in football and in, in, in particular uh, Newcastle, that for a while to, uh, to get there. I was on my last legs by the time I'd scored that, uh, that goal, so it was just relief to get there as well. But when you look back on your, your Premier League career, you, know, you have that, that debut at Southampton, you win the title with Blackburn, and you get that, that sort of fairy tale ending at, yeah. at Newcastle as well. It, how, how do you look back on it? I've been lucky. I mean, I've been. I know I worked hard. Um, I couldn't have worked any harder. I give it everything that uh, that I had. And for a youngster that left Newcastle at 15 uh, to have had the career that I've had and played with all the players and worked with the managers and and I've, I've lived the dream. I mean, it's every boy's dream to go and play football in front of thousands of of guys and and. I've managed to uh, to do that and I, I wouldn't swap it for the world. I've been so, so lucky. And for young players making their decisions and they are moving clubs more, more frequently now, yeah. what would you say in terms of making those decisions? What should they take? Follow your account? dream. Follow, follow your dream. It's an unbelievable life is, is football. I mean, getting paid to play football, it doesn't get any better than that. You'd still, I'd still play football and millions of others would still play football even if they weren't paid. So to get paid to play and have the adulation of, of so many thousands of people. But just work hard, give it your best shot and um, follow your dream. You just never know. And, and I did and I got lucky. Alan, we'll hear more from you a little bit later on. But Alan Shearer is our first inductee into the Premier League Hall of Fame. Find out who's next, next. To have pace, awareness and f be a finisher at the same time. It's, it's very rare you get that recipe. Wherever he picks the ball up, wherever he gets the ball, there's going to be problems for the opposing team. It was like playing against Usain Bolt, but Usain Bolt would play football, basically.
everybody wants to be Thierry Henry on the football pitch. It's another extraordinary goal from Thierry Henry. If you're a viewer, it was an absolute nightmare to play against them. How do you try and stop him? How do you defend against him when he's got everything? It's so easy to love a player like him because he never let you down. Thierry loved the club. He loved it, was proud of wearing the shirt. The fans appreciate that, and he appreciated the fans. It is Thierry Henry, and he's here with me now. Um, Ian Wright said there, you had everything. What does it mean to be in the, in the Hall of Fame? Uh, pleasure. Um, for me, it's just, um, like I always say, you always get over the moon when people recognize what you've done. I think it's very important.